Hundertwasser, The House of Happy Spirits, by Geraldine Elshner and Lucy Vandeveld. What exactly is going on in our city? In our big, gray, tidy city, some odd things have been happening. The old factory that made Grandma's furniture, it suddenly looks like a chessboard and a tall chimney lights up in the distance. Who is messing everything up? The wizard of the rooftops, whispers Leah. The witch of the forest, utters Leo. Tokyo says nothing at all. He's usually babbling on nonstop, my beautiful parrot. The most unbelievable thing has happened right in our neighborhood opposite mom's flower store. Right there, on a wild plot of land between the houses, stands a noble old tree in the middle of cluttered bushes and grass. With its magnificent crown, it is the king of our little forest. Tokyo likes to hide in its twigs and in the shadows of its branches. I celebrate my birthday there every year with Leo and Leah. That's when for one day, I become a little queen in our empire. One beautiful morning, however, the bulldozers arrived, together with cranes, concrete mixers, and trucks. They took over the whole plot in no time. I like construction sites, but on this occasion, I shouted, Stop! Leave my tree alone! Nobody listened to me. A man in a hard hat even blocked my way. My tree king was surrounded by machinery, half deafened by the noise, alone, dusty, and unhappy. He could only stand and watch. He was like a prisoner. We knew someone had been there in the night because a great big cloak was now hiding the old king's trunk. It's the cloak of a giant, said Leo. It's the cloak of a monster, stuttered Leah. Was our poor tree doomed to be chopped down? We watched him every day. Then, between him and us, grew a brick wall, higher and higher, and in the end, the tree finally disappeared from our view. Meanwhile, painted designs were appearing on the new wall. Lines extended like waves that curled and ran, and the windows glowed with frames of different colors. The wall glared at us with its big eyes. Every gap had something special about it. Here a checkered cap, there a blue scarf. When we saw all of this, we immediately began to color our own windows and walls. Down below, the sidewalk and street flowed like a river of multicolored patterns. A fresh breeze was blowing into town. Here and there, strange trunks grew up from the ground. Perhaps they are planting a forest, asked Leo. A fairy tale forest, added Leah. It must be full of gold and mythical creatures. We all began to dream. I imagined that these colorful trunks were keeping my tree company. What would they say to each other at night when people weren't around? Another morning arrived and we stood flabbergasted. Gold was actually shining from the roof. And at the very top, a huge onion was beaming in the sun. How magical is that, we exclaimed. Unbelievable. Indeed, we could not believe it. Had they built a castle right in front of our house? Tokyo almost choked with excitement. The next day, our store bell rang. Ding dong. It was a gardener who came to buy all of the plants in mom's shop. All the flowers all the shrubs, and he wanted still more, enough to make a whole forest. Where would he find room for all of this? 
the big day finally came. When I saw the completed house for the very first time, my heart bounced with joy. It was like a fairy tale with all of its colors and wonderful shapes. We then saw a man who was dressed as colorfully as the house. Striped pants, a funny cap, strange shoes. This could only be a wizard. The wizard of the roofs. Leo and Leah pushed me towards him. Come on, Maya, ask him. So I plucked up the courage and stuttered, uh, Excuse me, but do you know what has happened to my tree? The old, gnarled tree that used to stand there? You liked it a lot, didn't you? smiled the man. Me too. Come along. Shortly afterwards, we arrived at the inner courtyard and saw our big tree. It was standing happily on what seemed like a multicolored throne. It shined in the glow of the golden onion dome, just as if it were the king of this new little forest. We protected your tree, said the man. Could you and your friends look after it and my other lovely residents? Do you mean the people living in the house? I asked. No, I mean the trees. They are as much at home here as the people, and we should make them feel comfortable. We are all residents of this earth. Residents, residents, croaked Tokyo, and disappeared into the branches. And now, kids, he said, let me show you the house of happy spirits. A fantastic journey had just begun.